Hello everyone, this is Saima from Holistic Happiness Academy and today I'm a little bit down. Um, it's a rainy day, it was supposed to snow but didn't. But anyway, today I wanted to record this because I had promised this and interestingly enough, ironically enough, it's about being vulnerable and whether you can be vulnerable and what happens if you do um, try to be vulnerable or you are just spontaneously vulnerable with narcissistic people. So hit subscribe and like or comment below so that I can continue to make videos that are from a more holistic uh, perspective. So first of all, what's being vulnerable all about to you? And I'm interested in knowing your perspective. Here is my perspective. Being vulnerable means sharing your real feelings. Sharing or showing your real feelings. Not all of us, you know, feel safe enough to be vulnerable. And there are some personalities that are more courageous when it comes to this. There are certain people um, who can do this and certain people who find this very difficult at the best of times. However, in, in intimate relationships, in relationships where we really need that, we need to be safe when we're vulnerable with our partner especially our intimate partner. And when that sense of safety isn't there, that we can actually share our feelings without judgment or our criticism or humiliation from the other person, then that relationship becomes stronger. There's more trust that develops in that relationship. So vulnerability is something that a lot of coaches, um, relationship coaches or um, in, you know, um, therapists or counselors are often going to try and help you with so that you can be more honest about your feelings and, and let the other person see the real you. However, when we try that or when we are open with narcissistic people, the following things can happen. Which is why when people go to counselors or therapists, um, regular therapists, they really struggle where if their one of their partners is a narcissistic person. Um, it just doesn't go very well because narcissistic personalities are not actually well understood. And um, counselors try to give a lot of balance to the relationship and you know, they try to keep everything very equal. And so you may find yourself, if you've ever tried that, and do post if you have tried that, uh, that it doesn't, you know, quite meet your expectations. So here are four ways that narcissistic people actually react to any attempt to create safety in being vulnerable whether they're doing this themselves, two partners are trying to uh, figure out a problem in their relationship, or whether they actually go to a professional and try and figure this out, or whether they discuss it with, you know, a trusted family members. The first thing is blame. The narcissistic person is going to blame the other person as being at fault. They may blame their culture, their partner's culture, their personality, or they may blame other factors in their life. Uh, they may even be blame the society or the religion, um, you know, and, and just not truly empathize with the person who's showing vulnerability. So if you've ever cried in front of a narcissistic person um, and been, uh, you know, put down, shamed, um, or stonewalled or pushed aside or they have erupted with a tremendous amount of anger at you, um, you know, you may find yourself more and more shut down and more and more withdrawn when it comes to expressing your feelings with this person. So the trust factor can really go down if you've ever tried being vulnerable with a narcissistic person. Vulnerability is something that takes some courage. And the reason uh, why narcissistic people may never be 
able to have that um, is something that goes deep into their psyche and something that really a psychologist, a trained cl clinician uh, who specializes in that area could tell you a bit more about it. However, the second thing that could likely happen if you express vulnerability to a narcissistic person, apart from blaming you, is avoiding you. They may completely withdraw. They may stop talking to you. They may block you. Uh, they may completely disappear on you. They may tell you actually that they don't want to be in the relationship or they just, you know, may not even tell you. And next thing you know, uh, you find out they're with someone else. So any of these things can happen if you're vulnerable with a narcissistic person. So, so that's two things. What's the third thing that can happen is triangulation. When you keep insisting that there is an issue and there's a problem, the narcissistic person looks to their support system and they may have what are known as flying monkeys, people who agree with them no matter what. They could be their mother, their friend, um, you know, somebody, uh, you know, who will always agree with them and they know that. So they will turn to that person and they will actually um, tell, make you feel horrible because now they've brought this third person into the mix. And this third person is affirming them and they're literally replacing you. So if you're dating them or you're in a relationship with them, the third person, they may start talking to the third person as if they're closer to them than you in an attempt to make you jealous, in an attempt to make you try harder to get their love and basically to shut down, to, to shut down anything you have to say. So that's another uh, tactic that narcissistic people use if you try to get closer to them uh, by showing your vulnerability. The fourth thing that they often use actually and they may use it with a lot of anger is complete and total denial that there is a problem or that they do anything at all. Uh, to trigger you or to, uh, you know, hurt your feelings. It's just like, it's, I don't do that. It's not happening. Um, so they, don't, they may not even say that. They may just completely ignore what you just said and start berating you and yelling at you for uh, what you're asking. And, and, make, and, and so you're going to feel even worse, you know. So that's the reason why a lot of people who are recovering from narcissistic relationships they may stuff, suffer with a lot of self-doubt. They may suffer with a lot of self-esteem issues. Um, now, what can you do knowing that these are some of the reactions? And post in the comments below if there are, you've seen similar reactions or these kinds of reactions if you've ever tried to express vulnerability. The one thing you need to figure out very clearly is what's in it for the narcissistic person. What are their needs? Why do they need you? If they don't need you, if you're expendable, if you just can be replaced with another person, then you are not going to get much out of them, much effort towards the relationship at all. Um, they're going to cut and run. However, if relationship due to history or money, then uh, you will find that there is a possibility to negotiate better terms with them. However, when it comes to emotional support or emotional uh, needs of yours, you are better off understanding and taking responsibility for those yourself. To kind of nourish yourself, to fill your own cup, as it were. Um, because narcissistic people just don't have it to be able to give it. They don't function the same way as you do. And many times, you know, people who struggle with narcissistic people are often empaths or people who are financially dependent or 
materially dependent or socially dependent or there's some kind of dependency there's a perception that you or you need them more than they need you so there's this sort of you know uh, unequal so power in the relationship they are doing the best they can already you know uh, they need you they they want to make it work if they do want to make it work so what can you do you can actually do a couple of things one of them apart from doing your own self care um and do hit like and subscribe and post in the comments if you'd like more tools self care tools to manage your anxiety to manage your emotions while in relationships that are difficult for you so the most important thing of course is self care but apart from that self care piece the other most important thing is for you to be very specific about understanding your own needs what are your own needs what are your emotional needs what are your physical needs what are your mental needs from the relationship and once you get a clear idea of that you will need to communicate that in such a way that it is easily understood by the narcissistic person 